Hello guys, welcome to another episode of the e-commerce lab by EcomC, the place of everything related to Amazon FBA, private level and e-commerce. My name is Vincenzo Torcano, your host, founder and CEO of EcomC, and today we bring another special guest. His name is Kaman, and he's the CEO and founder of MC One Step, which is one of the top leading agencies in the space when it comes to helping you with all the creative side of your Amazon business, which we know actually is pretty much 80% of the success when it comes to driving the the conversions and then you know helping the client make a decision if your product is the right choice or not so that's why i wanted to bring kamal on board today because he has a ton of experience when it comes to this and i know his team is very well known in the space for that as well so yeah kamal it's a pleasure to have you on the show how you doing my friend yeah thank you so much Vince, and i'm super excited to be here you know, and thank you so much for the introduction. So, yeah, I'm glad to talk about uh, traffic conversions, you know, how you can boost your uh, traffic and conversion using the Amazon Creatives, different strategies, you know, that we have been working in the past, you know, few years that have been bringing results. So I'm super excited to speak about, you know, to, the, to this topic. Awesome. So now before we jump in, into that, let's start with a little bit about you, as I do with all my guests. I, I think it would be great to have a quick intro about who is Kamal and how you basically uh, came up with the idea of founding your company, MC One Step. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I started selling on Amazon in back in 2015. Uh, started as a retail arbitrage. Did some online arbitrage. You know, ended up doing hail, wholesale. And eventually, you know, sooner I realized that if I want to scale my Amazon brand, you know, I need to do the private label. So I started selling on Amazon private label products, you know, a couple of them fit initially, and, you know, and finally, you know, I found some traction. But at the same time, when I was selling on Amazon, I was building a community of Amazon sellers around me in Canada. So I was hosting different meetup groups like in Edmonton, you know, Calgary, Vancouver, you know, Toronto, Montreal. So I was you know, organizing meetup groups and the community started to grow really fast and people were asking me like hey who does your uh images who does your you know ppc who does your you know um like shipment uh, people were asking me like lots and lots of you know uh you know asking me for help and i was like you know i was referring them to different people I was like exactly. hey if you want ppc go to this guy if you want images he's my freelancer if you want so that kind of gave me an idea that you know maybe we should you know i should mm -hmm be doing something on my you know on my own instead of instead of just you know sending people to different you know companies so that's how you know amz one step was born and sooner we were like you know initially we were like providing all different services but but sooner we realized that people are really enjoying the creative services that we had because you know the design was good it was converting really well my team of designers that i was working with you know they were really really good so so people started to come back for creative so six or you know six months you know after we shifted our entire focus to amazon creatives uh, only so now we're you know as we mentioned we're one of the top leading creatives company in the business for almost uh, six years um yeah so that's about me and uh, amz one step and if you that's want <laughs> <laughs> i mean what, what a story to be honest it, it be, and, and it reflects so much um relate to your story in, in the sense that you know the reason why i also did my agency was because of that i was going to events webinars and all of that people are say who are you using for this who are you using for that how you do that and then i say wait a minute like you you actually can also make money selling your knowledge and your experience and it, it's great that you actually saw the opportunity and took action because so many people you know see it but they don't actually execute and you you done an amazing job with the um now let's jump into the topic which is you know everything regarding creatives and how we take advantage of traffic on, on amazon because i think um a lot of times people think that the issue is that they're having is traffic like they spend all this money on ppc on google ads influencer market all of that but realistically the issue is the foundation which is how the product is visualized uh, by clients right in in the form of images in the form of the video the copy and all of that and realistically that's uh, i would say always like 80 90 percent of what really drives um, the success on amazon having really good creatives the the way you communicate with the tonality and you convey the the, the needs of the customer and all those kind of things but at the same time that has to be backed up by data right so I guess to set the ground and, and open the conversation, like with uh, with all these years you guys have been doing creatives, 
uh, what are some of the things you you've been seeing that are really moving the the needle the most when it comes to conversion what are some of those elements yeah i think if you're looking at uh, you know the biggest needle moving thing in your creatives or you call it like 80 20 rule it should it should be your main image you know do okay. lots of uh, you know testing on your main image you know once uh, you know so your main image alone is responsible for you know the most amount of traffic that you get you know if people don't come to your listing they're not going to look at your a plus content exactly. they're not going to look at you know your listing or other images or the videos no matter how good you, good your product is if your main image is not able to drive traffic you know uh, in, if it's not able to increase the click through rate you know no matter how good of a product or listing you have it's not going to work so main image is one of the most important things that you know um that you can do as an amazon seller which can move the needle like instantly right so uh, and there are lots of ways to to do that there's like uh, you can use like third party softwares like pick food mm -hmm. there's new one in Televi out there working really well you can use manager experiments so do lots of split testing you know to see which image is bringing you the most amount of traffic and don't just stop there always keep going back to the keyword that you're targeting like look at what are the other main competitors you know what what kind of new concepts that others are trying which can you know potentially harm your uh, click through rate so it's not just one time thing it's a con const you know consistent process you know that should be optimized you know um uh, every single uh, month mm -hmm. if you have a very competitive product you know if you have like a decent product you're the best seller maybe you know uh, every quarter you should be doing the optimizations you know uh, for your main image by optimization i don't necessarily mean that you have to change uh, your main image, but always keep testing in the back end, like, you know, using third party softwares, you know, you know once you find the winner winning picture, you know, you can just change that. So that is the biggest, you know, uh, needle moving, uh, needle moving thing that I see, you mm -hmm. know, at least in the, you know, 95% of Amazon sellers, you know, if they could change, their main yeah. it's cool to, uh, you know, change the game, you know, for, for awesome. Uh, now, when it comes to the main image, at the same time, um, you know, some people, of course, starts to be mindful that, yes, that's definitely the way to go when it comes to split testing, but they struggle to come up with variations of the current main image. What I mean by variations, like, hey, should I do it with this angle? Should I do it with a shadow? Should I do it with a box? Should I do it with this and that? So I, I'm pretty sure that you, now, you guys now that have done it thousands of times, you have identified where some of the, usually the elements you want to test in terms of angles uh, and things like that. So what are some of the main elements you think, like when it comes to a main image, you want to split test? Like what are some of those things maybe you want to test? Yeah. So there are different strategies or different concepts that you can do, you know, when it comes to the main image. But the main purpose of the main image is, is two different things. If the buyer is on is, is shopping on a desktop or laptop what you want to do your goal is to break the pattern okay and if the buyer is shopping on a cell phone your goal is to stop the scroll exactly. right and how you can do that is the concept is exactly the same for example you know there are some categories where everybody is using you know amazon compliant image everybody's like product on white background they're not doing anything fancy fancy so just you by you know changing a little bit of things you know could do the thing you know it could it could have the impact because everyone is amazon compliant on the other side if you see uh, some other categories or which are really competitive everybody is you know using some gray hat techniques using graphics and you know, some are using some labels to make their main image stand out so it's like a very noisy right so how do you stand out from that you know how do you break the pattern there is going to be a little bit difficult but in in you know in, in the end, it all depends on you know how you want to break the pattern, and every keyword you know has a different pattern breaking uh, okay. you know yeah. images. So uh, I have broken it down to like fourteen different strategies, uh, you know that can you know Amazon sellers use uh, to break the pattern. But which strategy would work for Amazon seller really depends yeah. on what their competitors are doing. If their competitor, you know, we have to do something different, but at the yeah. same Time, our product should be very clearly you know uh, telling the other person like what exactly we're selling that's number mm -hmm. one number two and we should be telling that in in less than two seconds right if they're spending too much time on just looking at the image you know trying to figure out what exactly is the product what is the unique selling proposition you know 
it's too slow or too late people are gonna you know go to the other listings so so yeah so it really depends on you know what your competitors are doing and how you can be awesome. awesome yeah actually one example came to my mind i, I remember this brand, angry orange that was sold by hundreds of millions of dollars one of the strategies they were using this right very a uh, peach color orange when it comes to packaging right For, uh, just to give an example like of course that's also part of the packaging but that goes to to the point of what you mentioned breaking the pattern if everybody's using i don't know like um blue as a color on their email like i don't know pink or something that really breaks the pattern and really catch your eye to to drive that click right towards um that image um now when it comes to images as well um something i get asked a lot is like how do you think you can achieve the best conversion in terms of the the, um, the asset use on the image what do i mean by this some people lately has been using 3d rendering for the images some people is using photography some people is using ai so what are your take what is your take on that because i mean all of them really see, uh, can look nice, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm sure maybe you already have some insights about what realistically is being driving the best results in, in the long term. So do you have maybe something you can share regarding that, like what kind of assets you should be using on the image? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, I would definitely you know, love to uh, dive deeper into that just to connect with, with you, what you what you just said about uh, Thrasio's, you know, Angry Orange yeah. product. You know? um, this is the exact same example, you know, I could relate to that so much because we had, you know, one of our, um, you know, partners, we were speaking about like, hey, what what kind of different strategies, you know, we can use mm -hmm. to make your main image stand out. But, you know, before you even think about the main image, if you are watching this video and you're trying to launch a new product, or if you're trying to, you know, um, you know, in, in future, if you will come up new new product, you know, product itself makes the huge difference. If your exactly. product packaging or if the product stands, stands out, out yeah. stands out, yeah. then you don't need to do all those fancy stuff with the creative, right? So we mm -hmm. I was speaking with one of our partners and we're talking different strategies, like, hey, we can do you know this and that. When I actually looked at the product, I'm like, wait, wait a second. We're not gonna do anything because your product itself is so mm -hmm. unique that it's gonna draw everybody's attention, right? Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, so those strategies, you know, if you have a unique product which just stands out. You know, you have you know, you're operating at the next level, so I can relate to that so much. So good point yeah. you know, for reminding that, Vincenzo. And moving on to the conversion point, uh, there are a few things you know uh, that you can do which can you know change the game. Uh, let's say once you have a traffic, you know, the first thing that I like to do is how can your images can relate with the buyer like as quickly as possible whether it's an emotional you know whether it's an emotional connect or logical connect you know the first thing that we do in in the infographics is the concept of visual reference for example you know people don't really uh, uh you know humans don't really understand numbers that well for example let's say you're selling uh you know no I, I always give that example let's say you're selling a extra large you know delivery bag you know maybe the uber yeah. Eats or, or doordash you know drivers they've you know they are the target audience so you have two options your feature is extra large you know pizza delivery bag right so option number one is you can show the dimensions like hey it's 24 inches tall 36 inches wide you know whatever the dimensions are you can just show that feature that it's extra large that is option number one option number two you can use the concept of visual reference and show how many extra pizzas you can actually hold in that bag and show the picture of that so then people can instantly and logically they can connect with the image like the pizza driver you know pizza driver or a delivery driver you know is thinking like oh wow i can carry like two extra extra large pizza pizzas in this bag perfect and i can also carry you know maybe two liters of you know a pop or you know co you know coca-cola whatever so they can instantly connect because you are using a visual reference concept as opposed to just showing them the numbers okay you know it's 24 inches tall or 30 because it just in, in increases your conversion uh time right so if you're making you know the your buyer if you're making your buyer think you know you're losing show them visually with the visual reference for example let's just say your feature is lightweight and you're selling a vacuum cleaner it's a lightweight vacuum cleaner you can actually show like you know it's only let's just say two kilograms right or you can also you know show 
two kilograms is not maybe you know that's not the actual weight of <laughs> let's just say it's you know five kilograms right for, exactly. and it's it's and it's a lightweight so if five kilogram is considered lightweight instead of showing the weight maybe i would show a young girl young girl getting the vacuum cleaner with one hand and going downstairs or going upstairs exactly makes sense right so it's like the same feature but you're showing visually and telling the people like what is the actual benefit it's a lot better than just showing the numbers a so number yeah if you just change the concept you know in your infographics like how you're showcasing that it's a huge beneficial you know we see an uptick in conversions like right away so that is what you know there's like so many examples you know what you guys can do you can search on google 99 visual references so i have you know collected uh you know the best visual references you know in the amazon space the images the ideas that you can steal you know go to that blog you know it will give you so much good ideas you know how you can mm. change your main images uh i mean the infographic images just by having a new concept so this is what has been working really really well for the infographics but that is only you know you know one fifth of how you can increase the conversion the next part is the you know amazon you know lifestyle images right so how there's a concept that we do to make your conversions go up like there's three different things you can do like one is um emotional you know extreme use then the second one is extreme conditions and the third one is um extreme emotions right so whenever you're creating a lifestyle image you got to think to yourself that okay how can i add either an extreme emotion or ex show the extreme use or extreme conditions so for example you're selling a bathroom anti slip bathroom mat right yeah. so it protects you from slipping right so the feature is it's an anti slip and you know it's very safe to use in the bathroom right so you can either just show you know a feet you know on you know on on the bathroom mat that could be one lifestyle image which everybody's doing or maybe you can use a pregnant lady who is getting a tummy inside her mm -hmm. baby and she's the one stepping onto onto that anti bathroom mat so what is that that's like extreme emotion it's the same image you're doing the same thing but you're connecting an extreme emotion even though if you have no reviews on your listing people are going to you know trust yeah. your the product that you so, really understand the need you understand their pain basically yeah. exactly so that is one example of adding extreme maybe emotions right for example extreme conditions let's say you're selling waterproof you know you know outdoor camera right so yeah. the feature, feature is that it's waterproof right maybe show that in the stormy night right photoshop all those you know hails and you know wind and you know just show yeah. that it can last in those stormy nights as well right so it's an extreme condition right or maybe you're selling you know again vacuum cleaner and mm -hmm. the feature is that it can pick even the small little things right maybe show that in a messy house with you know with multiple dogs with dog hair all around the house and then it's just cleaning that so there are lots of you know emotional uh, extreme uses conditions things you know that you can do in the lifestyle images if you do this visual reference and extreme uh, lifestyle images your conversion will go up right awesome obviously right. you know obviously there are there needs to be like better reviews you know your price uh, needs to be good. we're not talking but about that, right? but that this itself already gives you a huge advantage yeah on top of your competition we do that. yeah for sure yeah, exactly. exactly so these are some of the things that you can do you know and the same concepts can also be applied to your video to your a plus content right so that can that can really help you know elevate your conversion rates right yes. another, another example maybe you know you're selling disposable cutlery so the what is the problem with the cutlery that it you know it can break while eating because it's a plastic it's you know so how do you show the uh durability maybe do a bend test you know bend it bend it all around say hey look at that like you know it's not going to break so now it's a no-brainer for the buyer to not buy that product if he's looking for that feature right yeah instead of just showing it's durable and won't break just show them it won't break very yeah. good i like so, it yeah so that's how you can increase the conversions with creatives yeah. nice um now uh, still uh, on, on this topic when it comes to um, these images like i i see more and more often people um using more uh, 3d modeling or rendering for the images because it, it seems like 
in some of the context, especially supplements, you want them to look very, the packaging very perfect, like the curvature of the packaging and things like that. Like sometimes on, on the on a photography, it's difficult to achieve. So what is your take on that? Like, would you say there is a specific guide you use like for this kind of product, you use 3D modeling and rendering for this photography? Or it's really based on on the choice of the of the client? What is your feedback on that? So 3D rendering, I am a, I am a big fan of doing 3D mm -hmm. rendering. You know, uh, it just makes your product look so much better. Exactly, right? yeah. professional. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it looks professional because when somebody, when a human is taking a picture, there's a chances that there will be human error. But on a 3D rendering, it's being done virtually on a computer. Mm -hmm. Literally, you don't have any, you know, any uh, lighting issues or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So, what how I like to use 3D rendering is mainly for the main image that's number one because if you have a 3d rendered main image it's just going to stand out it's going to pop out from the search results mm -hmm. it's going to look so much better it can help you with the click through rate but on these other images in the lifestyle images if you're doing like the actual models if you're doing like actual photos don't use the 3d rendering and if you're using like stock images, maybe you can use 3D rendering, you know, and, and Photoshop that into your lifestyle images and just make sure that it looks real because sometimes it can look fake. So you have to be mm -hmm. very careful with that. But again, with the infographics, you know, you can use 3D rendering and also some products, you know, let's say if you have to show what's inside the product or maybe if you have to show the exploded view of, uh, you know, of, of a product. So those types of images are, you know, really nicely done by 3d rendering but how i like to do there are some like uh, types of products which would make so much sense if you do a 3d rendering for if your product is a hard surface product it's gonna mm -hmm. be really good if your product is white or black in mm -hmm. color because white reflects a lot of light and black absorbs a lot of light so chances mm -hmm. of you know uh, error with photography goes really high unless you're working with a really professional photographer, right? So if you have a product in white or product in black, I would recommend you go with 3D rendering and uh, a transparent product, you know, highly reflective products, 3D rendering works great. Or if you're a competitor or whole niche is, for example, supplements, everybody is doing 3D rendering. So for those kind of categories, you must do 3D renderings. And how I would avoid, you know, some categories where you don't want 3D rendering at all, maybe clothing, Right, you don't want clothing to be 3D rendered or soft surface products. You don't want uh, 3D rendering for um, or product shapes which are very complicated. You know, so more complicated. Let's say if you have to 3D render uh, a laptop, right? So it's a, lots of little things uh, which can go wrong, and you know, it's just going to be so lengthy process. I would rather yeah. have. For just you know do a good job so it really depends what to choose but me personally i'm a big fan of 3d rendering uh for the products that fit well for it awesome now um on on the images um usually i get this question a lot and i guess it also going to depend on on data you gather to uh, split testing but people always say it's like after the main image, which one do you think is the is the next best order when it comes to the secondary, the third image, and so on? Like, what are some of the elements that they must be there? Like a, an image that talks about comparing my product against a competitor, an image that talks about packaging, an image that talks about benefits. Like, do you have some must have a, at a high level that you can also share in that in that perspective? Like order you like to follow for that as well. Uh, there is, uh, you know, there is no you know, hard and fast rule, what the okay. order should be. Uh, what we like to do is, you know, three different things. One is the product shots. You know, hmm. what you want to show is the product first. That is the first thing. For example, if you're selling, let's just say a laptop, you know, going back to the same example, in the main image, let's say you show the laptop open, right? And the next image, you know, what people want to see is the laptop closed yeah. right? mm -hmm. so so show them the product first you know where you can do it in the two images or you can do it in the three images you know does not really matter do not show your product on the sixth image because people want to see the product first right okay. like say if, if it makes sense or not right next comes is the features and benefits right so so in the and that can be shown in the infographics or lifestyle images depending on what is your feature and what is your benefit, 
right? And somewhere, uh, you know, in the images, you want to sneak in your unique selling proposition in such a way. It really depends on what 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 is the unique selling proposition. So you you want to tell a story and see where your unique selling proposition fits the best. Most of the time, it's on the fifth or sixth image. If your seventh is a video, fifth or sixth should be your unique, unique selling proposition. But many sellers, they do a mistake that they show their unique selling proposition right after the product shots or on the second image. The reason why we avoid that is because it can confuse people that, you know, uh, it can, you know, because let's say if you're selling a bundle, right? Mm -hmm. Show them the main product first before you just add a bundle image, right? So, so this is what we have been doing. But again, you know, there's no hard and fast rule. It, it is different for everybody. What I would recommend is using, you know, tools like IntelliV. I've been using it recently. You know, what you can do, you can upload all your, uh, there's a PicFu tool as, as as well. You can show, you can see the heat map, right? So yeah. always uh, do those testing, you know, um, and see where the heat map is. What are some, some of the images people are going first? Right. So there, if, if they're looking at, you know, the deck of images, there has to be in a certain images which just attracts people's attention like right away. So do those testing and you can just change it up. But uh, to be honest, we have not seen a significant improvement just by changing the order. Right. So it really makes sense for sellers who are doing, you know, 50,000 a month just from one SKU or 100,000. So it would make sense to do these kind of split testing. But if you have, you know, a less than you know, fifty thousand a dollar product a month. You know, you're not going to exactly. see big difference just by changing the order. But the advanced level sellers, they are testing it already. Yeah. Very good. Um, now, when it comes, I mean, of course, the images is always the main thing to to play with when it comes to providing a improvement in in conversions. But after that, which one would you say would be the second most important thing? Will it be the A plus content? Will it be the video? Would it be the copy? I mean, the copy, of course, is very important. But from the perspective, more of the visual aspect of the listing, like, um, what would you say is the next thing after the images? Yeah, it's got to be a plus content, right? So, yeah. uh, first thing, you know, when when people look at the review, we have done, you know, um, heat mapping with some of our buyers, and what we see that instantly people look at your images and then they click on the reviews. So when they click mm -hmm. on reviews, they go all the way down to you know the bottom of the page, read some reviews. When they come up then they start reading your a plus content right so they re-engage with the a plus content and most of and most of the time you know they uh make their decision you know just by you know they don't want to like you know uh spend way too much time you know uh on a listing before making a decision unless it's expensive product so images and a plus content is more than enough you know for them to decide if they're going to purchase a product or not you know, if they're really interested, you know, they will watch the video, but their decision is kind of made during the images and A plus content. So, okay. you know, very interested people would watch the video. Um, and yeah, so, you know, that's what has been working really, really well for the for the conversion images. And the next thing I would do is the is the A plus content on my images. But videos, you know, a lot of sellers, you know, they they, they really want video on their listing. But if they look at the video views, it's only you know it's like less than fifteen percent of the actual sessions that they have on the listing, right? Okay. And it's always you know it's also like a little bit challenging to find what kind of video would work the best for uh, because video is like you know it's like let's say 45 seconds thing right so video is also like where are you showing the content which attracts the buyers the most right so video it's like just a very linear thing images you know they can scroll up and down see what they what they really want to see first right so on a video they have to literally wait 45 seconds and uh, and it's only serious buyers watching the video anyways so so i would say a plus content awesome and just to conclude the a plus content um what is your take as well with the new addition of, for example, premium A plus content? Like, have you seen really a big jump in terms of a improvement as well? Or will you say it's really minimal when it comes to jumping from the normal A plus to the premium one? Yeah. Uh, if you have a product that has like lots of features and benefits, you know, lots of different things that you can do, premium A plus content is a game changer. It's been, you know, uh, it's been helping really well for our clients who are selling like ex expensive products. Right. For example, if you're selling like, you know, headphones, you know, with the 
120 bucks or something like that or you know 150 bucks for a headphone mm -hmm. it works really well because we can go in depth and you know explain the product really really well uh like what why people should buy that we have a lot of real estate to convince people but we haven't seen the biggest impact on a basic products like for example if you're selling coffee mug right so like what's the best you can do by premium a plus content like your regular a plus content can do as good as job as your premium a plus content so it's really working well for the products that can handle premium a plus content that right? can leverage the extra size of of a uh, real estate basically yeah exactly. right and repeat repeating content over and over exactly and aesthetically you know uh premium a plus content like every single time it just looks better because there's no bleed between the exactly models. Right? so you can so you can design in very better you know in a nice way you know they're broader so it just looks better and also for the mobile version you know the premium plus content you know works it way better smoother. you know mm -hmm. so, so those are the advantages obviously premium is better but if you're if you ask me the biggest impact is for the products that can you know leverage the modules yeah. given by so a lo lot of products i see that they're still you know un under qualified for premium plus content yeah that's good thank you so much kamal i mean this episode was full of so many insights and, and you know strategies when it comes to how to improve conversions which i strongly believe is the only way that you can really become profitable on amazon because i, I hear all the time people focusing so much on, on on ppc this and that which of course is important but if you're driving all these strategies when it comes to traffic but the foundation is not there when it comes to you know how the product is basically uh, perceived by your potential clients, uh, you're gonna basically uh, flop, right? So um, thank you so much for all those tips. And I think for sure people might be wondering, you know, it, all this makes sense, but I don't know how to do it. So maybe, you know, I need to reach out to Kamal so he can do it for me. So um, how they can reach out and work with you and, you and your agency, yeah? Yeah, so if you're looking for some help, you know, you can go to www.amz one step.com you know fill out the form or and and a book a call with one of our amazon specialists and we can walk you through you know how if we are the right fit for you or or, or not so that would be the you know best way to reach us out but if you guys want to follow us on social media see what we're up to you know instagram facebook you know search by forward slash amz one step and you know you'll find us there okay thank you very much come on so have an amazing one and see you in the next one yeah it's been a pleasure Bye-bye.